Mr. Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear students, uh, it is an honor and a great pleasure to stand here again for the second year as director uh, of this institution, the Diplomatische Akademie Wien, Vienna School of International Studies, École des Hautes Internationale de Vienne. I'm stressing that we have three titles, not only because we have more than one language used here, but also because we uh, try really to be an international school. Uh, and I would love to say this is a liberal postgraduate institution. My special welcome tonight goes to our, oh, this afternoon, it's not night, so, goes to Professor Fassmann, who is here at the Diplomatic Academy for the first time as minister. But he has had close ties to our institution for many years. I'd almost say he's a partner in crime. Uh, he was a lecturer and is a vice rector of our partner, the University of Vienna. He helped us to achieve a lot of things in the, in the last years. But when he sat here last year, also in the first row in his function as, as vice rector, we didn't expect him to be back a year later in a very different function. So congratulations, Minister, to your function here in Austria. And congratulations to our universities. The University of Vienna, some of you may have heard it, have just announced that they will have in the new three-year plan 70% more budget. It's all around money. So we are happy that Minister Fassmann gives us the honor of addressing our students, colleagues, and friends today. Welcome. I, I would also like to greet all our partners from the Austrian Ministry of Europe, Integration, and International Affairs, the members of our Board of Trustees, and of the Association of the Advancement of Teaching at the DA. I welcome uh, all embassies and international organizations in Vienna represented today, and I see quite a few ambassadors, especially from countries where our students come from. So thank you for coming. And I welcome also all other representatives and sponsors, and especially the city of Vienna, which helps us all the time. And a special welcome, I hope I can see him soon, goes to Ambassador Hans Winkler, who has led, who is he's over there in the corner, who has led this academy through eight very successful years, and he dared to pass on the burning torch to me. Welcome, Hans. I would also like to welcome, uh, as a representative of one of my predecessors, Mrs. Lili Sukaripa, uh, because also she supports the Academy in a continuous way. Thank you for doing this and welcome. <laughs> but at the center of today's commencement ceremony are you, the students uh, of this Academy, uh, the new ones and the old hands who begin their second year of studies. What, what I can say is my two years as a student at the DA have decisively formed my own professional life in really numerous ways. I lived and studied, I had the feeling I lived and studied in a community which was inspiring and with people from all corners of the earth. Here I acquired the prerequisites for my career in the Austrian diplomatic service and maybe more important, I have learned how creative diversity can be. With my team, it is now my task to position the Academy or to continue to position the Academy as a leading postgraduate center of excellence for students, but not only for the students, but for all of those who want to analyze or shape politics, economics from Vienna in an ever globalizing world. With the entire team of this Academy and all our cooperation partners, we will prepare our students in the best possible way for something that in truth we can only develop together the future of this world. And I think Vienna is a perfect place to study, not only because I'm Viennese, but also because I'm Viennese, <laughs> but actually because you can experience diplomacy here at first hand 
uh, you have all the international organizations and you will be able to visit and maybe also to do internships at some of them. This academy has a long history. I will not repeat the history that you hear, I think, throughout the year many times, but we have been established in 1754. Uh, and this morning when I, when I put on my underwear, my pants, I found a label on, on top of it saying it was called Esprit, and below it had, it had really the brand name established 1968. And I thought, well, <laughs> there is some difference, obviously, in traditions. This academy is, has been opened more than 260 years ago. So it is the still oldest existing institution of its kind. As much as diplomacy and international professions have changed over the centuries, also this institution has changed, is changing. However, some things remain the same. The commitment to academic excellence and to the principles of interdisciplinarity. I look at my faculty, they are looking after that prominently. And to the dedication to the fundamental values of openness and of a liberal world order. Whatever is going on at the moment lies also in the hand of the students and the later shapers of this world order. We strive to equip you with profound academic qualification, language skills, and other competencies. But we also encourage you to participate as much as you can in extracurricular activities like seminars, gaming. We offer excursions and, of course, activities with our DASI, the DA Student Initiative, and I welcome the new leaders and the board of the, of the DASI uh, very much. Most students see, and this is also something I want to stress, our excursions as, the, as highlights, our trips above all, the 10-day long trip to the Balkans with a bus, but also to the Ukraine and the Kurdistan region of North, North Iraq without the bus. You will organize this coming winter, a typical Viennese ball on our premises, you will organize a big academic conference, you will organize talks, ETSIA talks, you will write for your own magazine polemics, and you can choose among many committees and societies for sports, sustainability, gender equality, debating clubs, and the wine society. I do understand that the DA team is regularly winning the wine tasting competitions among Viennese universities. From what I learned from our first outing to Gumpelskirchen on the last Saturday, I understand that some of you are already well experienced in wine tasting. <laughs> you can also take advantage of our network of alumni that we have here. A number of them, of these alumni, are in top positions, presidents and CEOs and so on. They stay mostly closely linked to the alma mater and can help prepare you for your international careers. So please use the opportunities of the club, DA, as well as the career services. You will become, and that's important, you will become part of a community. Not only hopefully learning a lot about emotional intelligence and intercultural competencies, but you will be part of a truly international family, which an atmosphere of plurilingualism uh, on our campus. So I give you the figures, because in preparation of today I looked up one of these commencement speeches in Harvard. Uh, and the, the, the director said at, that, uh, at, at, the, at the Harvard University, he welcomes 5,000 graduate students. We are here 184 graduate students. And I congratulate you on the difference between 5,000 and 184. We have only four programs, MICE, DLG, ITSIA, PhD, uh, but you come from 44 different countries from all continents, and the majority of you are not Austrian. Also, the academic background of our student body is quite diverse. It's political science first, then it's, uh, it's economics, languages, history, and, and various other studies. I'm not mentioning all of them. Maybe I should mention theology is one of them, and even immunology. The Diplomatic Academy is also a place where we have executive programs, and this is very important to us. 
executive programs which, draw, which are drawing on experience of more than 25 years. We started this as a response to the end of the Iron Curtain and the opening of the eastern part of Europe. And they are mainly for junior diplomats, civil servants from specific regions and institutions all over the world. So you will meet as a student body, young diplomats and ser civil servants from Africa, Southeastern European countries, uh, and many more. Uh, and I'm saying this especially because today I would like to give a very special welcome to the 18 master students from Israel, Palestine, and Jordan who are here for an executive program for two weeks. Welcome. <laughs> Maybe Vienna is a good neutral place and space for your meeting. I would also like to welcome our ex exchange students from Stanford University and for the first time also from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. More exchange students will follow from our other exchange programs with the MGIMO in Moscow, the China Foreign Affairs University and from Korea University. We also offer cooperative degree programs, as you already know. One with Fletcher School of School and Dipl Law and Diplomacy in Boston and one with the size John Hopkins University. And we welcome two students from Fletcher and one from John Hopkins here. And one of our students is, is at the moment in Bologna. Uh, I would also like to mention our new PhD program, which we do in cooperation with the University of Vienna. And Minister Fassmann has been involved in the creation of this program. With our new cohort, we have ex extended to six students, one third of them DA graduates. So if you uh, uh, if, you, if you see yourself in the research sector, you have a chance after your studies here to apply for the PhD program. My special welcome goes uh, to something which is also new and it also to do with, with Minister Fassmann. We have our new chair, for the first time a new chair and a resident professor in European studies jointly with the University of Vienna. And it is Patrick Müller who is also, should also be here. I welcome him, I welcome him heartily. <laughs> Uh, I think for such an institution it's good in times of crisis in the European Union to have a new chair for European studies. Uh, and he comes at, from, he was, until now he was professor in Bilbao of the University in Bilbao. Uh, so besides our enlarged residence faculty, we have also visiting professors. We will have a Fulbright professor also this year. And for the first time, we have a memorandum with the Washington-based Israel Institute, and we will have a visiting professor from Israel, hopefully every year. So our resident faculty has now 10 faculty members, and we have roughly 80 professorial lecturers from a large number of universities worldwide that don't mention all the countries where they come from. But we have also practitioners from the Austrian Foreign Ministry and from international organizations. Let me take this short introductory speech as a chance also to thank all our sponsors because this is important, because this is an institution where we want to have you here for your merits, not for the purse of maybe your, your parents. It was our philosophy from the beginning to give support to students who are gifted but who do not have the financial means to study at the DA. And almost 40% of our students receive some sort of financial support in the forms of grants and scholarships, a number of them sponsored by the scholarship fund of the DA with a substantial contribution also from the provinces, the Austrian provinces. Therefore, I would like to thank all those public and private institutions and individuals, and many of them are graduates of the DA themselves who have contributed and will do so in the future. We also certainly, and I have to say this because I, I think it's, it's very important, we support, we, our, we owe our success to the support we receive from the Austrian Ministry of Europe Integration and Foreign Affairs and other contributors like the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie uh, and also members of the Association of Friends of the Academy and corporate sponsors. Take the chance now that the study year begins that you can meet here also diplomats, scholars, politicians from all over the world at our public events. And I recommend really to try to take out the time, I'm looking at the faculty, they don't like that, uh, take out your time to go to public events uh, uh, because 
we start the season already in full force with a number of, I think, highly interesting topics from challenges of international politics, the rise of Asia, consequences for European identity, peace process in Korea, conference on Chinese strategies, it's China all the time now, or on 13th of November, we will try to celebrate 100 years of the Republic of Austria in a European and international way. We have decided not to have a celebratory event calling the, 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 the begin of the, of the Republic in 1918 as the, our zero, but to, let us think about what the history of this greater Austria means now for European integration. The conference, we will, academic conference we will do has the title Why History Matters, Lessons of the Habsburg Monarchy for the European Union and Lessons of 1918 for the World Order. At the end uh, of 2017, we also did something new, which may be of interest to you. We launched for the first time a forum of foreign policy thinks, think tanks in Austria. In Austria, we have a network, created so far a network of almost 30 organizations and institutes based in Austria, which focus on foreign and European policy. We want to share best practices, want to strengthen interest in foreign policy topics uh, in the public sphere. And from this day, from today, the forum has its own website that will provide policy briefs and research papers from all these organizations. Uh, so you are invited to visit www.fatwat. We will see it on our monitors. The monitors is my, almost my last thing that I want to mention. Uh, you already have seen it in our new foyer. At the entrance on the D to the DA and on the first floor, you find monitors with information about current events and lectures. But more important than monitors is always art. And we have decided uh, that we want to commission a work of art by an Austrian artist uh, for the entrance area of this academy. Uh, and I'm happy to say uh, that this specially commissioned artwork has been made ready for today. You can see it in the entrance area. It is based on three personalities connected with the long history of this institution, Maria Theresia, Metternich, and Kissinger. You may, you may be surprised that we have chosen Kissinger because he is obviously the only non-Austrian among the three of them. But Henry Kissinger was uh, a professor at this institution when it was reopened in 1964, in the first year of the reopening of, the, of this academy, actually together with Fritz Machlup, uh, and the economists among you, and our dean, uh, will know a lot about him, and he was, he became famous, he's Fritz Machlup, uh, for the fact that for the first time he said that knowledge is an economic resource. Uh, and this is for such an institution an important evaluation, that knowledge is an, is an economic resource. Let me review, welcome the artist of this, of this work of art, Waltraud Cooper, who is here with us. Thank you. Uh, I wish you all, and this is already the end of the beginning, I wish you all a very interesting, rewarding, enjoyable next academic year. Uh, besides our students and alumni, I want to thank uh, especially all the faculty, and I want to include especially here now the language departments that we have, the three language departments, uh, because sometimes they are overseen when we talk about the academic excellence that we have, but you deserve really to be mentioned especially. So thank you very much for, for all your efforts and work. We promise to continue our work with enthusiasm, energy, and the belief in the importance of excellent training. I hope you share this. And we believe also in the importance of excellent training to keep up with high standards in a competitive world, but also to prepare you in the best possible way for your future careers and for being responsible citizens uh, of an ever-changing world. During last year's inauguration, I ended with a quote from the British philosopher John Locke. And I have to say, I stay on the message. It's so important, I think, what this Enlightenment philosopher said, that I would like to finish with saying it again. We are born with faculties, 
and powers capable of almost anything. Thank you for your attention.